So today we have here a 1951 Jeep 134 cubic inch F head engine, meaning the intake valves are in the head, the exhaust valves are in the block, so this is a little bit unusual. A local shop brought this in for us to go through and rebuild. The story is that it came out of Northern California and the fellow that owns this, that was what he learned to drive in as a kid. Both him and his sister uh, sounds like they learned to drive this as a kid. But actually, the last time it was licensed was 1985. So it's been quite a few years since this engine has ran. And they are doing a kind of complete restoration on this truck. They're not making it perfect, but uh, getting it back so it's drivable in again anyway. The shop that brought this in to us, they did go into this as far as they had pulled the head off and looked at it and decided they was in over their head on that. So they put it back together, put all the pieces back on. So I'm not sure what we're gonna find inside this thing. But anyway, let's start taking it apart and see what we have. Not, uh, not terrible bad. It's uh, kind of grungy, about like these old engines are when we get in there. I have a new photographer here this morning. <laughs> Nicholas is taking some time off with that new little baby they have, but we got to keep things going here. So Josh, my son-in-law, is doing the filming this morning. Hello. And, yeah, <laughs> say hello. <laughs> Guy behind the camera. Uh, yeah, looks like a cast iron piece, so we can put that in the oven there. Looks like most of the head bolts are already loose here. So I can miss a bolt there. And there's a hidden bolt down here in the intake port. I think a lot of times people miss pulling that one out of there. And then they start fighting the head, can't figure out why it won't come off. Yeah, there we go. That one is twisted off. Take the oil filter canister off here. Take that thermostat neck off while we got it here. Wow, it's really dry, quite corroded. We can probably clean that up and make it work one more time, but if we could find a better one, we would. Or that's eroded so bad. I have a rule in the shop here that regardless of how good thermostats and spark plugs look, I always throw them away so the customer has to buy new ones. That way there's no chance of an old thermostat going back on a good engine and ruining it. Taking out the temperature sending unit. You always want to use a hand wrench on them because the impact will shake them so hard that a lot of times you'll ruin a ascending unit. See, we got an oil line on the back here needs to come off. Okay, I think we're ready for the head to come off. Oh, 
what do we got? See how that's, there's no carbon buildup in this area? I would say that's an engine that's probably been burning a significant amount of oil and has washed all the carbon off of those areas around the outside of the piston. You can see there is quite a bit buildup here in the chamber. Also, look how rusty this is in a water jacket. They have been running this engine with no antifreeze. It's had just straight water in it for coolant. So I don't know if they were in a climate that uh, Northern California is what I was told. I don't know if they was where that they never had issues with things freezing or if they were only putting coolant in during the summer months. Is that something people normally did back then? Yeah, back in the day, a lot of times people did that. And it's really hard on the engines because they just build up so much rust in the water jackets when you don't have good coolant in there. Looking at the top of the pistons here, it kind of confirms what I saw there. They're pretty washed clean. I'm sure this thing's been burning a lot of oil. Some ridge in there, not as much as you sometimes see. I don't see any markings on the pistons. Let me uh, go get a, a caliper here and let's measure the bore size, see if this has ever been done before. Okay, got a uh, caliper here. Let's just take a quick measurement. And that appears to be about three and an eighth inch, which I believe is standard bore size. So maybe no one has ever touched this motor before. Man, that would be great if that was the case. I don't know if I've ever seen one that was standard size yet. <laughs> I, I recall many more of these that were already oversized than standard. So let's keep going here. Get a few more of the pieces off. Take the exhaust manifold off here. That's not going to do it. I'm going to have to get something with a little more power than that. Okay, I'm going to put just a little bit of penetrating oil on them. Probably a very good chance I'm going to twist some of them off. Trying to get them out of there. Twist that stud off back at the block. Hey, look at this. What are we doing today? <laughs> I got demoted. <laughs> got demoted, huh? <laughs> I feel a little left out. Do you? Feel like maybe you've been replaced? Yeah. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Me? Just hanging around. Well, that wasn't too bad. We got, uh, what, one, two, three, three of the bolts out, two of them twisted off. Looks like we got a twisted off bolt here where the exhaust pipe connects up. We'll go ahead and throw this in the oven, clean that, pull out the uh, dipstick and the oil filler. That's quite a combination. Tube here appears to be loose. Let's pull it out. Yeah. Let's see. What do we got here on the front end of this? Hopefully they'll be putting those on new, but in case they're not, we'll save them. The rubber part of the motor mount. This would bolt to the frame of the vehicle and support the engine in rubber to eliminate vibration. He's dumbing it down for me because I'm not a machinist. <laughs> Road draft tube, back before any emissions. Blow-by gases just blow out under the hood. Looks like a homemade gasket on it. Lots of years of grease crusted on this thing. Now then the side cover should come off. That has been off at some point in time because uh, they did not have silicon rubber gasket sealer back in 1951. So somebody's been in here a little bit. But back in here is where you make the adjustments on the uh, exhaust valves, where the springs are located. All your lifters are in this area. 
Maybe we're about to the point we ought to take the flywheel off on the back here and then we can mount the engine up on this stand before we go too much further. These are a little bit different than most engines. They have six bolts or studs coming through to hold the flywheel. What's normal? Uh, usually you just have bolts in there rather than studs. I'm going to take my little washers off. It has star washers on each one of those. Let's see, as I recall, four of these are going to be bolts and two of them may be a bit of a taper. I better put some nuts back on those before I tap too hard and mess up the threads. There, we broke free. If you put the nuts on the end of those bolts before you tap on them, it'll keep from messing the threads up. If we look at this now, you'll see there's four of these that are basically just bolts into the flange of the crankshaft, and two of these have little tapers on them, and it goes into the holes here on the flywheel, uh, so it can really only be put on one position and onto that taper so it holds it where it needs to be. And one of the things you always have to remember is make sure you put those bolts back in the flange of that crankshaft before you put the crankshaft in the engine, or you may end up having to come back and take that back out and do it over. And this plate, I believe, should just pop right off there. There we go. Okay, that can go in the oven. I think we're ready to bolt that on the stand here. It's kind of like putting your tinker toys together. <laughs> well, that looks like a figure pincher when you're uh, it all around like that. Yes, it very could, very easily. Very well could. But I'm going to hang that there for just a second. So yeah, it takes a little bit of time to get this all bolted on, but it'll save us time in the end. Now we can hang it up on the stand and we can spin it over every direction to work on it. And there we have it up on the stand. I think this flywheel, we can go ahead and put it in the oven, bake it, clean it also. Look at that, you can see where the uh, clutch disc had sat there for so many years. It just kind of rusted in place. I'm sure that was stuck when they got ready to move the vehicle. Valve cover, we can go ahead and put that in the oven to bake it. This oil filter, that hose will need replaced on it. Let's, at the very least, take the filter out of the inside of it. What kind of mess is this going to be? Oh, yeah. Oh. 
yeah, this is clear full of oil yet. You know, I just took that filter canister out to dump that in our waste oil collection tank. Such a filthy mess, and it did not have a filter in there. They left the filter out. It was just a canister full of old oil and sludge. <laughs> I'm not sure what the story was behind that. This cap, I would normally bake that to clean it, but it has a spring attached to it there. I think we better just wash that first instead of uh, destroying that spring mm. in the oven. So we got to try to figure out how to get this bottom pulley off. Not came off easy enough. I don't want to do any damage to any of it here. There we go. It's coming off. Good. A lot of this stuff you just have to be kind of gentle and patient with it. Grease and dirt. And that, that's what makes it rough is you can't always see what you'd like to see because it's so covered. There, we have it. And I think that's a piece too that we can bake and blast. Should be able to get the timing cover off here. And that has a shiny bolt in there. Somebody has been in this somewhat recently. You're talking about this, this oh, that bolt right that there. That bolt right there is a nice shiny bolt. <laughs> so I don't know what the story is. This thing's a little bit hard to find all the bolts on. I know they're there, but they are covered with grease. Interesting, this uses a bolt and nut to hold the timing cover on as opposed to most engines just having a bolt that's threaded into the block. And a lot of them have a little star washer built right on the nut, probably for ease of assembly. And of course that one stud in front of the block, but the nut came out with the stud. I'll have to take that apart separately. Same thing here, bolt and nut with the Star Warfare. We probably ought to uh, go ahead and tip this thing over and take the oil pan off before we uh, try to pull that cover off of there. I'm gonna roll this over just a little bit. I don't wanna tip it clear over because I know there's gonna be a whole bunch of oil and sludge in the bottom of that pan and I don't want it to end up in the top of the motor. Just makes it so messy. So these little bolts just have lock washers on them. I'll pull them off so when we clean the parts, they don't end up with steel shot packed up under the washer. So two of those, the washer is fixed to the bolt. They won't come off. The other four, they came separate. Oil shield is now out of the way. Lots of washers under there. Had washers for spacers between the oil pan and this shield. We'll have to remember where those go. Good thing you have a video of it. Well, that's it. <laughs> you know, I used to, on the odd stuff, would make lots of notes. But now that we have the camera and it's so easy to take pictures, you often just t either take a picture or make some notes of it. I'm gonna throw this in the oven. And I should be able to get the bolts out on the other side here. I think I'll take the drain plug out while it's still there. Well. <laughs> Did you do that? Come on, man. Cleaning guy back at it again. Thought, oh, it'll be okay. Risky, but you didn't think it was that risky? Yeah. I'm glad it didn't have any more oil in it than it did have. Just had a trickle 
oil filter. It's not a full flow oil filter. So it just trickles a little bit of oil through that filter all the time to filter some of the stuff out of the oil. But on top of it, this one didn't even have a filter in that. But look here in the bottom. I mean, scrape up just chunks of sludge. And this is just kind of how these old motors used to be. You know, we didn't have very good oils. We didn't have the filtration like we have now. And it was not uncommon to have just a huge amount of sludge in the bottom of your engines. And that's why they didn't run that many miles. Years gone by, if you got 100,000 miles out of a motor, that was a huge success. So now we've had fun playing in that. I think I'll start over with some clean gloves again. Okay, we'll pull the timing cover off. And yes, indeed, somebody has been in here before because there is silicone all over the place here. I'm almost wondering if this is maybe uh, somebody just did a re-ring on it at some point in time because uh, it does appear to be standard bore size yet. But for whatever reason, they've had the oil pan off of it. And you know, I was talking about all that rust. Look at just all the dried up rust falling out of the, the block here. Uh, I don't know why this had no coolant of any kind in it. I hope we don't find a major issue with it. I haven't seen anything yet. Pickup screen here can come off. See, and it, this is actually a float that has an air entrapment in there that uh, allows that to just float with whatever the level of the oil is in the oil pan. I don't know why that was done back in the day, but you see a lot of engines that had a, a pickup tube that just floated with the level of the oil. Okay, just like that 235 Chevy we did a while back, look at this, we have Pell nuts on all the rod bolts. That was just kind of thing back in those years, this being 19, 40s and 50s vintage. Uh, they had the second little Pell nut on there as a lock nut to keep the rods from coming loose. Take our key out of the end of the crank there. Little half moon key. Then I can take the oil slinger off. This slinger on there, as the oil kind of gets squirted out between the gear teeth here when that engine is running, it catches that oil and slings it back out to help lubricate everything better and keep it away from the front timing seal. There's a spacer there that has to come off. And this has two threaded holes in there. If we decide to pull that gear off the crank, we'll have to put a puller on there and actually pull that gear. I'm not too sure if we're going to do that just yet. Timing gear. Looks like that's still fiber gear. I'm not sure if they ever came out with uh, metal replacements on these or not. Washer, star washer. I would say somebody over torqued that one at some point in time. That shouldn't be all concaved in as much as that is. Let's see, where can we go from here to turn this thing. I'm going to put some spacers back on here and see if I can use that nut to uh, turn the engine. I'll bet I can stack some valve seats on there to use as a spacer. There we go. There! It's free! Hey, that's good. That'll make it a lot easier to take apart. As much rust as we had in the cylinders there, and as dry as it looked from sitting, the amount of years this thing has just sat, I was really afraid it was going to be stuck. So now, do you suppose any of the rods are numbered? Can we see any numbers on them? They are. 
That there is a really expensive flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a two on the cap and a two on the rod. So I don't know if that showed, shows well enough for you, but it shows well enough for me. <laughs> you feel comfortable with I it? I feel comfortable. Okay, there we got the little pellet nuts loose. So now let's see if the rod nuts themselves will come off. Okay, let's see what this crank's going to look like. Well, I've seen worse. Let's see if there's any dates on this bearing. No, I don't see any markings on it. I was hoping maybe it would have a manufacturer date on it. Does that help you know if someone has gotten into it previously? Yeah, uh, if I was to take that cap off and it was dated something prior to 1951 or prior, I would pretty much assume they were original bearings. Oh, okay. But I don't see any kind of marking at all on those. My only guess is they are quite worn out. You see the, uh, where the material's starting to flake away? Oh. See those spots there? So I don't know if those are, they almost look like they've been hot and maybe melt it just a little bit. It may have been run, yeah, that doesn't really look like it's just flaking away. It looks more like it was hot enough that it started to melt the bearing material. So it may have been run a little bit low on oil sometime. Um, I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that then. Uh, so a lot of times if I was worried about the crankshaft, I'd put some bolt boots on here to save dinging up the crank. But I know we're going to be grinding this one. So I'm not going to even worry about, about it right now. Uh-oh. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> lost, lost your screwdriver in there? There, one of them's out. Look at how rusty and dry this all is. Whoa. I, I can't believe it's so dry. I don't know uh, what they really did to it the last time it was run. But now, look at this bearing. Big chunks missing out of it. Boy, I don't know. Again, it almost looks like it's somewhat melted. Maybe that's why uh, everything's so dry on the top here. There we go. Oh, I'm up against the, uh, the ring on the top. That's why it's giving me trouble. Yeah, look at this one the same way. Quite dry. Yeah, this one really shows. I think that's been hot and actually melted the babbit. Ah, there's some numbers. Oh, there it is, CB236M. So that's a Clevite bearing, CB236M. I'll bet that's standard size. I don't know if they would have been the OEM supplier to this or not. I'm almost thinking those may be the original bearings. That one at least has some lubrication left on it. It doesn't show any scoring on the pistons, but with those center ones being dry the way they are, 
I wonder if all the lubrication was just cooked out of it and then the oil temperature was so high it started melting the bearings. Now here's something always kind of look for on engines. See the wear pattern on that piston skirt there, how it kind of comes off to one side here a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much straight up and down here, but it comes off over here. There's a real good chance that that connecting rod is uh, bent ever so slightly. Now there is some scoring along the sides of that one. Not sure what that's all about. It's directly in line with the pin. And if you look closer, I can see some shiny on the edge of that pin. Which one is this? That's number four. Oh my gosh, look at this. That wrist pin has been out far enough. It's run up and down the side of the cylinder wall. Okay, so we got this piston out. And I started noticing, whoops, these marks right in line with both sides of the pin. And if you look right here on the edge of that pin, I can see it's shiny where it shows having worn the um, carbon off of it. But now let's look down inside the cylinder. Look at the grooves that has worn into the cylinder wall where that pin was running up and down the side. Oh, no. So I don't know why that would be out there. We'll have to check, see if that pin is loose in the rod and had moved, or if that rod is bent to the point that it's allowing that side of the rod to push clear out and uh, cause that pin to wear the cylinder wall. That may end up having to have a sleeve put in it rather than bore it, everything so big to clean that up, we might just uh, come back in and put a sleeve so we can go to a smaller oversize. But I'm curious, I'm gonna tap on that pin a little here and see if it moves in the rod. No, it's tight, it is not moving. And it's centered up about as well as it can be, but for some reason, that rod was pushing clear over and bringing that pin clear to the edge. And I don't know why. Could that be why the oil pan had been off? You suppose that was something um, they had an issue with and somebody went back into it? I don't know. We'll never know. I heard it was lunchtime. Let's go eat lunch. That's more important than this engine. I agree. <laughs> okay, let's hang it up for a little bit. Okay, we're back here from lunch, ready to tear down some more of this. And earlier, I was talking about not wanting to pull the oil pump out just yet because there is this uh, offset slot down in here that the distributor has to line up with. And if the oil pump is not put in the correct time with the camshaft, then the distributor's not in correct with the oil pump and just makes a real mess out of the ignition timing on this. So anyway, the process of doing that, you know, before we couldn't turn this when the pistons were in, but now that its uh, pistons are out, we can easily turn the uh, crank and the cam here. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to bring this back to top dead center here and look where this is at this point and mark everything. And I started looking over here at the timing gears and look what I found here. I don't know if you can see that zero there that indicates the timing mark on the crank gear. And I think that mark there is a zero that indicates the mark on the timing gear. And this thing is one tooth off. Whenever this was worked on before, maybe they put new timing gears in it. I'm not sure what all would happen. But it appears to me that this thing has been one tooth off for quite some time. Uh, so we're finding some funny things here. We've now got the timing off by one tooth. We found the notch worn in the side of that back cylinder where the wrist pin was up against it. And I'm not convinced that that's even uh, recent. That may have been in there a while. It almost appears this was taken apart and that problem fixed. 
I think the engine's been quite hot, the way the uh, cylinders look there and the way those bearings appear to be melted. We'll never know. We just have to kind of observe what we can find here and move on. So let's just keep going here, take a few more things apart. We'll go ahead and take the oil pump off. And out comes the oil pump. Now maybe we can see that a little bit better where that screwdriver slot is in there and it is offset one side so that has to go back in the right way to have everything timed correctly. And we can probably find some literature on this that uh, tells exactly how that goes but I uh, also want to look at how it was when we disassembled it to begin with here. Let's see if we can get the crankshaft out of this block. He's going to mark a number one here to the front side and a number two towards the front side here. I believe those two caps are different and probably only fit on one way, but it's easier to mark them than question it later. Probably going to have to go get the puller to pull that one out. Oh, there's another thing I'd kind of forgotten about these engines. See that? It has a little dowel pin that holds the main bearings in place. And those little pins, once I pull the bearing out, those will come out of there. So we got to make sure we keep track of those, don't lose them. Everything is so slick and slimy on this. Now, front main bearing has the thrust on it. there's any dates on these. It says standard size. Um, I'm going to say that's original bearing. Wow. I, I don't think that's ever been a part. Yeah, I think that's all the original on there yet. This is kind of a homemade tool. Actually, uh, I got to give my dad credit for this one. He made this for me years ago works on uh, blocks like this one and v6 buicks there's probably some others that we've stumbled across over the years let's see if that won't be enough to have that lift this out And there we have it. Get the tool back off of it. There's the rear main. They have a uh, kind of piece of rubber plug that goes along each side there to seal the area between the cap and the block. And then they have the good old rope rear seal here. seal. No neoprene rubber there. So that's literally a piece of rope? It's a piece of rope. Yeah, it's a piece of kind of woven rope. Has a lot of um, graphite in it. I'm sure this one is probably actually asbestos. I would assume the age of this, that's probably made out of asbestos. Uh, I think today they make them out of maybe Kevlar materials along that line but you just can't beat the old asbestos seal. Yeah, that bearing is marked standard on there. 
You can see standard stamped on there. And uh, FM, Federal Mogul. Oh, look at here. There's our date. 9-52. Ninth month of 52 was when that was manufactured. So this is either a little bit newer engine than what that truck came out with, or this bearing has been put in after the fact. Hmm. So no telling, but I, I would consider that be the manufacturer date of 9, 9 of 52. Okay, so now we got this cap off, there's that pin I was talking about, little dowel pin. Make sure you save those. Uh, they're easily lost and hard to replace at this point. Another one in this cap, Let's see if I can get the bearing on it. There's one more little pin there. Lay that down there with that one. Stamp standard, FM, Federal Mogul, 9 of 52, no, 10 of 52. So anyway, like I say, remember to put those back in before we put the crank in, or at least at the same time. Now then, here's another interesting point on these cranks. Look at the counterweights. They're literally bolted on, and then the bolt is spot welded on there so it can't come loose. When these cranks were forged, it is a forged crankshaft, uh, they were forged without the counterweights on and then afterward they, the other machine work was done, they add the counterweights to the cranks and balance them. Now the last one of these engines we did, I recall uh, one of the weights was loose on there getting ready to come off. I can't even, not even imagine how much damage that would have done had that come off. So anyway, one of my uh, studs here came out. I'm going to pop that one out while we're right here so I don't lose it. There, it's out. Is this a tapered stud? I don't know why they made these things that way, but they did. That's all there is to it. We'll have to put the puller on that, pull this bottom tiny gear off, and the thrust plate here, and we'll find there are shims in there that you either add to or take away from to set the end play in the crankshaft. Let's get the rest of these bearings out. There's that one. Let's see what it says. I don't see any date on that one. The standard size. Standard size, no date. The other half of that rope seal. Let's get these pins out. Oh, that one's stuck. It doesn't want to come loose. That one might have to stay till we do some cleaning on the block. Why don't I take a couple of these brackets off the side, get them out of the way. I believe this is the generator bracket. It has a rubber bushing in there, it's hard as a rock. I think that'll have to be replaced. So I'm not even going to worry about trying to save it. Now I think we talked earlier about this block being a little bit unique. It's what they call an F-head style with the exhaust valves being in the block and the intake valves being in the head over here. Most modern engines, all of your valves are in the head. When engines kind of first started out, there was probably the uh, norm was for all the valves, intake and exhaust, to be in the block, such as a uh, old flathead Ford V8. The early, early 134 engines were a flathead style uh, with all the valves in the block, uh, but then 
as the years went by, they made the change, put the intakes in the head. Let's see if we can take these out. This isn't the perfect tool for doing this, but I think we can get it apart anyway. Those are tight. Here, my clamp fell apart. Why don't you take one hand and just hold a hand on that, like that. There we go. There, we got the valves loose. Let's see how bad they feel. Well, not too bad, I've seen worse. Pretty gummy. Really gummy. Yeah, those are really gummed up. Look at all that varnish sludge build up on it. Face of the valve, really worn. Oh yeah, look at that one, how cupped that is. They got all their use out of those valves. I think we have one more keeper in here. That got it. Guides aren't, I mean, they're worn, but they're not uh, not wiped out by no means. But boy, those valves are shot. Definitely be replacing those. Let's see if I can get the springs and retainers come up out of here. There's one. And you'll notice the spring is wound tighter on one end. Coils are wound tighter than this end. That's the end that goes towards the heat, towards the block itself. Pick the keepers out here that we took loose. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So now if we take those bolts out of the front uh, behind that timing gear we should be able to get the cam out. Hey Augie, why are you over here? Okay here comes the cam. Well, what do we got here? That's the fuel pump lobe. It's showing a little bit of wear. That lobe is definitely worn. Starting to pit away on the edges there. It's very rounded on the nose. Same way with that one. A lot of pitting. Let's see, which ones would that be? The, uh, that's the intake lobes that are looking the worst. The exhaust lobe is much more pointed due to the design of it. It's just the way they are. That one there is an exhaust. Uh, but that one there, intake, naturally more rounded, but it's, it's worn quite a bit too. So we will be either sending this cam out to be reground or replacing it with a new one depending on what we can or can't get at this point in time. So let's see if we can get this front plate off here. A few more bolts. Looks like one there, there, there. I think that's it. And I'm going to go ahead and take this ground strap off. It has a big star washer on that to help make good contact. Then this motor also has this oiler right here comes off a main galley there and I can't see it right now but there's probably a little tiny hole in here I think I can feel it it's right there on that side I don't know if that shows on camera 
but that sprays oil right into the teeth of the timing gear to keep those well lubricated. So we'll take that out. Gallery. You know what? <laughs> I've called it galley forever, and I'm going to stay with galley regardless what people say. And I actually saw some comments on there that they claim that in GM tech manuals, old tech manuals, they're referred to as galleys. Hmm. And I am going to dig out some of my books and see if I can find that anywhere and see what, what's really going on with that. Okay, there's our front plate. Nasty, dirty, crusted up. We'll bake that, clean it, make it look like new again. These engines use one cam bearing in the front. All the other positions, four other or three other positions, they only have four bearings on them, are just metal to metal. No bearings installed. So we'll knock that out of there. Since we're going to have to do something with that cam, I'm not even going to try to keep the lifters in order. We'll send them in, get them refaced. I think our buddies out there at uh, Delta Cam should take care of that for us. Cupped out, wearing away. Be interesting to know how many miles or hours this engine really has on it. Probably not as many as you might think. Probably lots and lots of short trips, start and stop. Oil changes far and few in between. All right, so we've got this thing pretty well down. Maybe I'll get the tool that's knocked that cam bearing out. Okay, there the cam bearing is out. Like I said, there's no other cam bearings in there. The rest of it rides metal on metal. I think as far as block goes here, I'll go back through. There's quite a number of galley plugs on here that uh, I'll have to get out. Alongside here, we got a couple of fittings here I need to take out. We'll knock the freeze plugs out of it and this will be ready to go into the oven and be baked with the other parts so we can get it cleaned. Maybe before we do the, any more there, let's take the uh, springs off the head here just to see what it looks like. Keepers are really stuck tight in there. I guess though, if those have been in there for how many years old do we say this is? Or, yeah, 1951. So that makes it 49 plus 24. What is that? 73? So this thing was already wore out before I was born. Yeah, guides don't feel too bad. These are kind of like a Chevrolet. The uh, retainer goes down on, and then a big O-ring goes in there, and then the keepers go in to seal it up so the oil has to shed off the side. That's what all of this is about. Kind of makes an umbrella out of it. Uh, We'll probably uh, put some positive seals back on the intake side here if we can when we go back together. Valves are, I mean, they were still sealing. They got, as shiny as that is, they were sealing rather well. But uh, they are worn out. So, I think with that being said, I don't know as though there's much more to show here. Let's go ahead and, I think off camera, I'll just pick everything up here, get it in the oven, get things baking, and we'll come back another day after we have things clean and start doing some machine work on this. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds good to me. All right, see you later.